blame people. Um, actually, because shame is such a logical feeling if you're not doing what you want to do, it's very easy to blame people. And that's where often in relationships it gets so hard if you want to work together on the same subject of an addiction. Uh, in relationships, what I want to talk about, I want to give some bad news, I want to give some good news, and I hope to give some practical tips as well where you can perhaps work on it. So this is basically, I say this to the partner of the person battling an addiction. Bad news. Bad news, addiction is chronic. Uh, I told it before, um, and it's good to remember that's uh, chronic. Uh, other bad news is there's no one to blame. Uh, people didn't know that on beforehand, uh, perhaps you didn't know beforehand. Blame is basically not useful. Um, that's bad news because a lot of people have, like to blame their partners for their addiction. It, it's easier. And I sometimes say jokingly, if you want to have a, a and then that's a sick joke of course, but that's me uh, every now and then. Um, Sometimes I say to people, if, if you want to have an easy life, get a partner with an addiction because every time you feel shit, you can say, your fault. Uh, and that's, because that's sometimes what's happening in relationships. Enabling is not the same as blaming somebody, but enabling does exist. If somebody has this urge where the crocodile sees chicken, and I pile a lot of chicken in the room and say, well, gotta leave now, then it's gonna be really hard for the person to not eat chicken. When it's crocodile, so I'm really towards chicken. Um, be careful about enabling your addicted partner. Craving often doesn't go much recognized. Um, if you, you could say craving is a feeling that goes from, from 0 to 10, uh, if I have a good addiction going, it will grow over days, it will grow all the while when I'm not giving myself this clarity, it will grow. And when do I notice it? Often it's only when it's, a, for instance, a 7. And I don't have that much time to react anymore then. If I learn people to get more attention and give more attention to their feeling of craving, they learn to react, to notice it earlier and therefore react way earlier, have more time, actually. Could you imagine what happens when I learn to recognize it really early on? I would have way more time to react and therefore less slip-ups. And that's what I often do with people. I give them this uh, form, actually, and, and say to them, well, where do you feel things, where do you feel your craving? And uh, you get to know these bodily feelings. And perhaps even, and it's just an example, of course, uh, it could be that I'm feeling rushed and that I'm suddenly not really this feeling of urge. It could be tense shoulders, it could be tense hands, it could be salvation in my mouth, it could be different for all kinds of people. Even there could be different cravings. I've got people who say, well, I have this craving where my head hurts and my hands are really unruhig. Uh, um, don't get <laughs> the English word now, but my head is the word. Um, and there's these other cravings where my where I'm quite relaxed and really and I'm gonna do really stupid things. It could be that there are different kind of cravings often people do notice. Learn to talk about craving. Uh, people often don't want to be connected to this craving. They don't want to talk about the craving of their partner. Learn to talk about this craving. It, it is the weak part of the, of the chain and it will probably be a great signal toward how much pull there is on the chain exactly when you learn to talk about these cravings and also talk about your own cravings and imperfections. Because this perfectionism is also getting into our heads and that's why we don't want to talk about cravings and that's when we talk about 
why we don't want to talk about imperfections. So that's, if you admit to your own, it will be easier to talk about things. Slip-ups. Slip-ups are to be expected. As said, 98% does do a slip-up. There may have been a point in life where you had your last slip-up, but if you look at the whole trajectory, almost everybody will. So, as a partner, you have to expect that and have to learn to talk about your irritations about these things and not let them build up, but have to talk about things and where you want to be clear about things and where you want to give clarity to your partner that this is irritating to you. Because shit happens in your relation because of the slip-ups. Uh, and it's good to remind that it's not, as you said, it's not about not falling. It's about getting up again. And that's not an excuse. It's certainly not an excuse, but it, it is the reality. If 98% slips, then it's... Yeah. 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 But some people die yeah. when they slip up. Yeah. So there's no get, uh, getting up again, ever. True. True. Yeah. yeah. That's a big... Yeah. It's a thing that... Yeah. But the thing is that if you just try to avoid slip-ups and if you just try to, to avoid everything, you live a life that you can't keep up, so you will slip up. It depends on how you live your life, I think. I think it's very much how, how you live your life. And as, as you <coughs> stated wonderfully and with failing gracefully, if you're not fighting the slip-up when you know you can't keep it up, if you're not fighting it and being ashamed of it, but you say, okay, now I'm going to do damage control. And gracefully is perhaps a bit a nice term, but <laughs> and, and I'm going to make this as minimal as possible, and I'm going to have, have as much help as possible, then the chances of dying are less. But the chances are there. Yeah. But the chances of when you're just fighting it, I think are bigger. But that's my personal yeah. thought. Um, well, there's this partner irritation that I talked about. And um, do we notice a pattern? <laughs> it's the same, uh, same thing. Eh? When do I recognize it within myself? And what would be great if I could react earlier? It would be over fast. It wouldn't linger so much in the relationship. Um, the root of, out of the, the dependence. Um, a long uh, road. Hmm? A, a long road. It's a it, it's a long road. It, it's a lifelong road. It's actually, an everlasting. it's an everlasting road. Uh, but there is this way where you get up, and there is this very clear way about you, how you think that should happen. And there's also this very clear way that you say how your partner should do it. And this is the way how we should do it. And then reality kicks in because what's actually happening is probably something more like life. And that's again, if you learn to see that this is part of a way up, then again, a slip up could be a lesson. If I learn from every slip up, chances are there I won't repeat. If I just say I should never do this again, blah, 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 blah. you've said that before. So that's why I often say learn from every slip up, if, if you've got a slip up. Try to learn from your craving so you don't have to slip up perhaps, but learn from every slip up. And I respect the fact that life is not as straight arrowed as we'd like it in our perfect minds. Perfect minds, yeah. Bad news is also that often uh, three, uh, the, the threatening of loss of work is a, a bigger, of bigger importance to people than the, the risk of losing their uh, relationship. And that's again, why is that? Um, I think that has to do with what happens within your relationship because of those chemo tricks. Um, for instance, being alone. What happens to perception if I'm having a dinner with nice people around me? Uh, what would happen if, if I was really hungry? If I was really hungry, I would be geared towards the food. I would be geared towards also the, the things I 
to get the food into my mouth. Those were, would be important in my perception. If I'm an alcoholic, probably the glasses are important. And the bottle is important. And, and not only the glasses, but especially my empty glass. And, and I would have this instrumental, instrumentational relationship with this waiter who pours the wine. And if it gets really young, if, if my glass stays really empty for a long time, it could very well be that this is my perception of the reality. And that's a loneliness people often don't recognize that people with an addiction can feel like I feel so alone even when I'm surrounded by people, especially if you can talk, cannot talk about your cravings. If you can, that will change. And you will have this hypersensitivity to drugs we <coughs> talked about. Um, often I get the, because I, uh, as an integrative th therapist, I like to treat clients not separately but within their system. So I also meet partners. And often I, uh, I get this sentence, it feels like he's cheating on me. And why could that be? How could it be that he fe he's cheating on me? Because I give him all the love and the consolation and, and the hope and, and, and we talk and we talk and we, we have so many words. But what's happening in this heart on the other side? Where does he go with his grief? Where does he go with his despair? Where does he go with his craving? It, it, there must be another one, because I, as a non-addict, I will have people I'm surrounding myself with. So there must be somebody else. Well, there is something else. You get the, the feelings away by using. And of course this feels on this side like there's somebody else. And the good news is, there often is not. The bad news is, there is something else. And that needs often relationship work on both sides. We talked about before, clarity kills craving. Uh, external control, but you, it's the difficult thing is how do you get external control as a part of self-control? Uh, because what's the biggest risk as being a partner? How will you be viewed upon on your partner if you try to control your partner? You're the one doing the speed controls and saying to stop. So that's you're not a partner anymore. You're just the bitch that stops me. And but it's it it is about finding an equilibrium. <clears throat> if the drug is in the visor of the crocodile, I will have this feeling of craving. And it, there is this equilibrium between craving, craving and ways to control. And if, for instance, the drug is very much there in my surroundings, and I do not have that much ways of control internally, should speed that one up, um, then you would need more external control to get to get the equilibrium, to keep the equilibrium. And of course, if you learn to have more self-control, then the external control should get less. Which is not easy, because as a partner you have this feeling that everything goes right because I make things go right. So you tend to hold control, whereas you have to learn to let go of control, otherwise nobody learns self-control. But there probably will be craving and slip-ups when learning that. So other bad news. In integrated systems, uh, if one part changes, you probably need to change too. And that's not easy. We're talking about the blaming part. If I can say, well, you're to blame and I'm not happy because your addiction, that's easy. But if you do take, hey, I have to learn this too make a difference as well. I have to change as well. 
it, it helps us to think about the Janus head. It's so very clear. My partner, he's an addict. Uh, he's so ugly when he's drinking or snorting or smoking or uh, having, a, having a look at porn or whatever. When he's using or she's using because my uh, women are also addicts. But then, then, then he stops, and and he's he's such a nice guy. You, you can't imagine he's this other one as well. It's it's like a split personality. It's not the same guy. It's just a, a quite different guy. This way of thinking makes you think I should get rid of that guy, and then this will be left open, which is nonsense. Actually, the thing was happening was something in between. He will not be that guy, she will not be that bad, but on the other hand, probably because there's less shame, he or she will not be that likable. Actually, the scope gets less, it's what you often see. You win some, you lose some, but you lose this denied feeling of shame and guilt and being in debt if you start to really accept. I am an addict as well and sometimes my addiction does something for me and I have to learn to do that myself without losing. Your partner is not who you think, your partner is not as ideal as you think. Oh, and the bad news is you're not either. Because your relation seems so good when he's sober and it's also fine with it and some things aren't said but that's and then you get this other part of the what oh, I often talk about getting rid of the shame that bind, binds you. Because there's this other way as well the part as well. And you're bitching as well probably. So if you would accept both to be more yourselves, you could be you could reach from codependence to interdependence. You need each other and you want each other. But you have to let go of some things, some ideas about yourself and your partner. Even more bad news, it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, this is theory and the reality is practical and practical is always harder than theory. Um, and why is it so hard? Well, because of this pendulum swings you often see with people with addiction. There is a tension building up and there's this release slip up and then there's a shame and I will never use again. But then the shame goes back and it slowly the tension builds up and there's a slip up again. And this pendulum swings, which you can understand better if you look at it as a pendulum, We are always swinging in between two positive qualities in life. I, sometimes I'm, I, I'm re a bit messy and sometimes I'm very structured. Well, sorry, no, uh, forget that last part, but it's just an example. Uh, let, let's say otherwise, let's say I'm, I'm structured and I'm a bit messy. And that's both, that's okay, it's an okay play area. Uh, but then if I start feeling bad about it, I start working very much and start really getting everything in order and everything should be right and I can't get it right all the time. So I probably will think, and I will swing the other side. And that's where the slip-ups go. That's where we push ourselves, and if we release, we swing the other side. So that's where you get into this functional analysis with people. Talk about it, and talk about it within a relationship. Uh, what feelings do I want to discard using dope or the drugs or whatever? What feelings, what uh, things do I want to experience by using? And if you get to get clear about this, these emotional sensations that you really want to live, then suddenly you could, for instance, say it's, uh, it's just a list. 
things I want to discard, things I want to experience. And of course there's all kinds of interrelations between those. And if you get those clear and you talk about those, you could perhaps talk about things you want to change in your relationship. Also, this also, everybody's different and it's, it's eh, just an example, but you can talk about things that you really want to have done or want to live and maybe you should get more sleep or not too much on your plate or maybe you should have things like breathing or running or, or uh, meditation or medication. Maybe we should change things and help each other keep them changed. And relational issues are almost always a part of sharing the, the responsibility for a lifestyle that keeps up the things that need to be kept up to not let things grow. And that could also be uh, enough fun, or is my life horny enough? Or <clears throat> those could also be things that are important. Okay, if we have this coaching goal, and then people sometimes tell me, Hans, it, it's kind of strange, I, I'm, I'm, I'm come to, coming to you uh, for my uh, dependency on dope, and now I start to notice, if I hear you right, I should be dependent on people. And I say, yeah. Because at least then you don't know what you're getting, because you will know what you're getting on the route down of addiction and dependency. So I think it's actually a positive thing that you don't know and that you have to talk about it. And that's a lifelong road out of and learning to live with yourself and learning to live with your partner. It's not as easy as it sounds. And why is that good? Well, because it's lifelong. You can live it and, and, and there's nobody right. Uh, and, and, and you could be, for instance, 100% responsible. What would you do if you took 100% responsibility? Would you... Too much. It, it will be too much on the long run, yeah. But on the other hand, you will notice that if I start to talk about things earlier, I will be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And if I wait and try to make our relationship so nice and my mommy and, ha and daddy are really very happy about it because I don't show anything about the addiction of my partner, then I won't be able to do it. So, if you would take uh, and if you were important in your life as well, if you would be 100% responsible for your life as well, what would you do? And on the other hand, what would happen if you weren't that important as you think? I'm the one that keeps it all up, I'm the one that has to keep all the balls in the air. What if you say, well, sorry, I can't, I won't. And that's often a, a hard part in therapy where you have to mourn as well uh, with people of losing some ideas about how you think your life should be. But responsibility is often an important word in that. So the good news, um, you can learn from craving, you can practice alternatives, uh, sometimes you don't really need to do them. Uh, the thing I often say is, if you only know how to dance when you have been drinking, and often people say, I do need a drink before I can dance, then a sober life would mean that you never dance again. Or you learn to practice and you practice dancing without drinking. Yeah. Slip-ups, as told, repeat less often when you learn their lessons, and if you not just try to ignore them, but if you learn the lessons. And, and especially if you do this together, there's a bigger chance this is very well doable. But it's not as easy as it sounds. Thing is, you gotta work on quality of life for both partners with an equal responsibility towards both and towards yourself.